Is everything going okay? Everything is going great. Um, right now, I feel like after Asian American Heritage Month, there has been a lot of support for the Asian American culture, and it feels that you know um, people are really you know coming out to support us. I see. First and foremost, you could have died. Can can you feel that you could have died? And also, if you if you could go back. To this place again, 130 days ago, would you do the same or would you do something differently? Yeah, so, you know, after the incident happened, I always had the thought, you know, I could have really died there. And it was something, you know, I was hard to grip with because, you know, I would just um, toss and turn in the middle of the night thinking about the situation, you know how it could have turned out if I didn't uh, do everything according to what happened. And it feels like there is a part of me that could have really said, hey, I'm still living in that moment. You know, I can't, you know, just say it's already over. Um, and. During the first few weeks, you know, it was really hard to sleep. It was really hard to get over the fact that I, yeah, I, I could have, you know, not existed. And, you know, I could have ended my life there. And it was only through the help of therapy that I was able to, you know, come to terms with, you know, what has happened. And if I had the ability to go back in time and, you know, I, change the situation, I feel that I would still want to do everything that I did. I would want to be here that night because I would not want anybody else to be in a situation similar to mine. Such a brave young man. You've been a, you've been a national hero for four months. And I'm sure a lot of people remember you for, I mean, when it comes to mass shooting and also the, the, the braveness that you came up with. Uh, but let's go back, let's go to personal level, your, your life, your family, and also your future career. Ever since this incident, has, has, they, been, has they changed? Has there been any change in uh, situation that you have to correct yourself or change the way that uh, you saw this world or people? Yeah, so there has been um, some changes with my family. Um, my my grandmother, she's very proud of me. You know, she she thinks what I did was a bit um, brash, a bit stupid, but uh, she's proud of you know what I've did. And um, my sister and father, they're also proud, but um, they feel like that I should uh, take this opportunity to um, enrich my uh, education and further my career. And I feel that you know that is important too, but. Um, the biggest changes of all, I feel like, is with my life, where I get to connect with people I've never thought I would even, you know, have the chance to be in the same room with, or even, you know, get a word out of them. But um, it seems that, you know, people have been real, really outgoing and really um, happy to uh, listen to what I have to say. I see. Now, ever since the incident that the we were glad People around the town, um, pretty much throughout the nation, right? Uh, companies, people, institutions, nonprofits, kind of poured in this uh, appreciation. And I'm sure you uh, got some help financially too. Now, um, among those things, do you remember specific the appreciation from somebody or the appreciation letter, email, phone calls that you ever received? You could just pick one or two. Yeah, so. Um, or maybe President Biden. No, uh, <laughs> there was uh, one. Uh, um, actually, uh, there was one appreciation um, gift that was very important to me. Um, a week ago, there was a live GMA segment, and I was part of that segment. I was a feature, and on on the segment, you know, I thought you know it was just about my studio and the dance culture here, 
But uh, they surprised me. They surprised me with um, a donation of money f towards my education. They gave me grant for my scholarship. Uh, and I was very happy to hear that because, you know, money is, also, is, is a problem when going back to college because you wonder, do I have to take out a student loan? Uh, do I have to, you know, work for more money? What, what, what do I have to do to accomplish um, these uh, educational strides? And I was happy to hear, you know, they were supporting me with this um, decision. And it, it was, you know, a shock to me, a surprise when they came out with the check. But I was, I was you know, I was happy. I was glad they did. <laughs> another, um, another letter, oh, another appreciation gift I remember is, um, there's a, there was a, a package that came for me, um, sent addressed towards me um, here in the studio. And when I opened it, it was uh, drawings. Um, it was uh, drawings that came from a school classroom. And uh, yeah, never <laughs> would I imagine that I would be able to influence youths, um, you know, in third grade or elementary school, you know, I didn't think they was really relatable to them. But you know, in these pictures, you know, they drew me as a hero and they, you know, complimented me and really supported what I did. And I was happy, you know, I give them a positive outlook in life. And with this appreciation, I felt that I had to give back. So when I sent back a letter, I actually you did. I did, because I felt that, you know, it was warranted um, some kind of response because they spent their class time, their day, you know, drawing pictures of me and writing a letter to compliment what I did. And when I wrote back, I attached a um, $50 uh, gift card for Domino's for their school pizza party. And I hope they did get their pizza party because they deserve it. Wow. Now, not just a hero, you became a true inspiration to all those kids out there, right? I'm glad. What's the, uh, the actual ground for that, of that incident? Do you think? Uh, is it a system? Or is it a law? Or is it a, is just individual anger he had? What made this incident possible ever? When we heard this whole situation of the um, gunman and his background, it seemed like he had more than one weapon, more than one gun. And it wasn't obtained through any illegal means, I believe. And it seems like the system allows leniency for people to purchase weapons and gain ownership of this. and. This is kind of a, a culture issue we have in America where, you know, people love their firearms. You know, it's kind of like a sport to them. But if you think about it, it's, it, it's a very dangerous sport. Um, a sport that should be uh, changed because we see now that there are more gun incidents than there ever has been before. And we aren't even halfway through this year. And there's more than like 100 incidents that have already occurred. And having that being said, you know, when do we say enough is enough and we should put stricter laws into play? Because right now, people are really in support of the right to bear arms, but that also goes into question, do you have the capabilities to uphold the responsibilities of such a weapon, you know, such arms? And, you know, it doesn't excuse you from the repercussions of what you do with such arms. It's just a very hard situation to get out of because we have had decades and um, hundreds of years of American history that 
this gun culture is part of our American life. Now, <clears throat> throughout this four months, like I mentioned, uh, you met the president of the country and a governor, mayor, mm -hmm. whoever, you went to GMA. Um, I know the politicians promised something to you that, I don't know, they might have said, like, let's do it together. Um, you're a brave young man. You can be, or you, 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 you are a big inspiration. And I, and, I, and I guess, and I assume that they promised many things to you. You don't have to name them, right? But what are the promises that you got from the politicians? And also, oh, was God. it kind <laughs> of reasonable and practical? What do you think? Um, I can't remember any specific promises made, but you know, they just... I, 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 I'm not sure how to answer this. There's not really any promises they made, uh, per se. But it was sort of a time where I'll be meeting a lot of um, elected officials and government uh, body. And at the time, you know, it seemed like they wanted to support me in any way possible. And I was glad to have that support and say and that um, hand behind uh, me. But um, it's hard to put a um, specific detail on it when we say, what did they, you know, help you with? <laughs> did you ask them anything? Like, please make sure that we have a system or we come up with a new system that wouldn't allow any as the assault weapons or anything? Yeah, of course. I've, you know, discussed with them, you know, how they could further improve our community and our safety here. Um, and, you know, it seems like there's not a lot of there's a lot of initiatives that are being put forward as of now that um, align with that sort of thought process. And it just takes community support to really come together and you know, pass these laws and these um, regulations that could really help our community. Now, I'm not sure if you could remember this uh, spot shooting two years ago in Atlanta and also uh, I mean, right after the Alhambra shooting, Light Eye shooting, we had a, a big shooting at a shopping mall in Dallas, Texas. We lost a beautiful Korean American family. That you know the story, right? Mm -hmm. And the only five years old boy left mm -hmm. out of this family. The hearts really broken. Whenever you come across this uh, mass shootings, what does you make it feel? Does does it make it feel? I mean, some kind of trauma, or does, does it make you feel, or maybe you don't want to hear this kind of news anymore. What about that? Um, I feel like the Atlanta spa shooting, um, I've actually took part in a memorial um, for it, uh, a Remembrance Day uh, in San Francisco. Um, there's an event there. And I took part of it in it, speaking out about about um, Asian violence, Asian crimes, and gun violence, and hearing that the situation around the nation has only gotten worse, and these occurrences more frequently happening and more frequently broadcasted, it seems like we are in a there's this mass hysteria where people are coming out to um, to contribute to the violence somehow, where they think that it's uh, that their life is how do I say this? No, it seems like people are endangering the lives of other people for attention somehow and it just shows me you know the cruelty of humans and what we could this nation has in store in the future if we don't get things back into the track back back on the right track track because there are times where i wonder you know what sort of thoughts or what sort of, you know, headspace were they in where they could commit such 
such crimes and such atrocities as harming other people. And, you know, this is just, you know, I think we as, as a um, culture and some of the people here, our discipline has really dropped in a sense of, you know, altercations somehow become, you know, deaths. You know, people have the simplest arguments or uh, keep, keep emotions bottled inside and then they abruptly come out and then it comes out and, and people die. It's just what type of mental health space are they in? And that's when I think that these mental health resources and wellness is really important and comes into play, you know, really helps people get over this emotion so that these type of situations don't occur. Some people say the Asian or the minority communities are more vulnerable. You, do you kind of agree with that? Because of the language barrier, information barrier, because we are not in the culture of uh, uh, ownership of guns? What do you think? Um, I think that minorities are more susceptible because they feel like they aren't really supported and they're kind of isolated in the sense, as you said, where we have a culture and language barrier and we aren't, you know, really outspoken enough to uh, have the support of others um, and the resources available uh, in the sense of government, uh, government programs. But um, it feels like we are more susceptible because as a culture, we have our differences in um, opinions. And, you know, we don't seem to really have the need for uh, ownership of weapons, of guns, because we come from um, a cultural community where we say, you know, the problems of our our family you know has to be dealt with um, right. in a um, more private manner, non-violent way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, now, like I mentioned, the spot shooting. There, there are two sons who lost their mom. Uh, she was mm -hmm. sixty-three years old. Back then, working hard, taking care of the, their sons and their family, and also we lost the. Uh, beautiful family out in Dallas, Texas, in the shopping mall. Is there any message that you want to tell them? I mean, is there, I mean, I wonder if there's a way you can comfort them. Yeah, um, so I just pray for them, honestly, their family, their family safety, and I hope, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, they can come to terms on what happened and really, you know, move on and move forward. Um, I hope that they get the support and help they need. And I hope that their community and uh, people that hear this message could support them and, you know, um, at least know what their community, their story, their background, their family is about. So I encourage people that hear this interview and this message to read up on that. and to really support them because right now, you know, they're going through the toughest time in their life where this, the, the, the sons, they, they lost their, their mother, their, their, their parents. And it's a time where they just need the comfort and the uh, stability of a family. Now you said uh, it's, it's part of the problem is the system, the lawmaking process and also who makes that law eventually. Is there a message that you want to send out to all those uh, state politicians and also Congress out there in the D.C. that you visited and met a lot of them? I mean, one message uh, that I want to say is our country has been stagnant for a while now. You know, America used to be so great where we would be the forefront of all innovations, education, you know, discipline, um, just we were a beacon of hope. Now, now we are this nation where people seem, see us as 
a playground of, you know, crime and um, evil. And I just want the politicians to, to act upon that, you know, to change our nation for the better, to return to our former glory days, because what is the point of, you know, having this body of government if there is no change, you know, you know, we are a community that is trying to our best to improve ourselves. We cannot remain stagnant and just say, hey, you know, things are good now when things could be better. Now, this is going, this is going to be a very practical question, if you don't mind. Um, right here in this, this lobby, you faced that situation. You struggled and you were able to get him out of here. Uh, saving lives in the studio, right? Let's say we may face this situation. Anybody can face this situation somewhere out there, even their home, right? What's your advice? Do we struggle like you or do we just run away? What do we do? Um, I think the proper thing to do is ensure your safety. Um, of course, if you're familiar with uh, the establishment or the building or home you're in, you know, you have the advantage there. But um, first, ensure safety, uh, call the authorities or, you know, uh, make sure you are put in out of harm's way. Uh, if that involves hiding, please uh, do that. Um, but uh, I think, you know, each situation that involves um, involves violence and harm is uh, unique and different so if you have the if you have the opportunity to take control of you know this situ the situation you're in you know i think i urge you to do so but you know don't try to be a hero and you know jump out there and <laughs> you are a hero i am a hero but um coming from one i feel that don't try to be something out, you know, out there where you are taking initiative to. Try not to do something like yeah. a, based on the instinct. Yeah, think it over first. You think know, try to reason it out and see if everything can be done. Is you know possible? Is 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 it real? <laughs> Alright, now we move on. Uh, everybody asking and wondering where you are moving on to. Uh, you, like you said, you're joining or, or apply for a college or are you even joining the sheriff's department? <laughs> oh, no, uh, no. Where are you going? I where, have not where joined. Where do we expect to see you next, next chapter? Yeah, so as you mentioned, there's a lot of people who mentioned, you know, I've been. I've been offered uh, to be part of chef, sheriff deputy in that department, um, but um, you know I feel like it would not be a good fit for me, and I would not want to join that department on the grounds of having no merit, uh, in the sense where I have not been previously trained or um, have experience in the field of a uh, you know police work. It's just it's just. Uh, I would say um, a bit demeaning to you know enter that type of uh, role if I never had the privilege of um, going through the educational and ability uh, testing for that. <laughs> and um, you know there has been a lot of opportunities that came by to me um, as of recently and. It seems like everybody wants to connect with me from different careers and different roles. And uh, I've been taking them very seriously. I've been taking okay. them very seriously and thinking it through. So I'm not making any you know, rash judgments right now, but um, definitely one is um, I'm gonna be going to school. Okay. Um, but there is room to say that school is not everything I'll be doing. I started a uh, fund with a nonprofit organization to improve the um, awareness of Let's mental see. health uh, resources and wellness to see if you know we could avoid such situations from recurring again. 
because um, people who usually you know, resort to violence and uh, resort to hate crimes and such uh, come from a headspace where they feel they're isolated, there's nothing else they could do but um, act out. And you know, by spreading this awareness and these resources, we might have the opportunity to support them uh, mentally and help them not do such uh, rash actions. Well, thanks for your time. I think uh, that's all we have. You want to add anything? Uh, yeah. The fund is called Brandon Sai Hero Fund, and it's uh, with the partnership with the APCF, Asian Pacific Community Fund. Okay. Can we help you? Uh, do you have anything to uh, um, where we can send money, say, a local um, Korean American? community also nonprofits who can contact you and maybe raise money for you maybe for your yeah yeah so uh, I have a web page set up okay. and um, if you see my poster um, it's a uh, QR we'll, code we'll put it yes down. and um, you can read all the information on there to um, support if you would like you know if you have the um, feel that it's a good cause and mm -hmm. it aligns with your thoughts please support Let's see.